We love getting questions from you at home watching. So we're going to dip into the viewer mailbag. This question from Saucy Crossy. It's a really interesting name. <laughs> Saucy Crossy. What do you see happening next season with the Canadians' assistant coaches? With the power play and penalty kill dead last in the National Hockey League, you can't possibly bring back the same assistant coaches next year. Uh, Rick. Well, Saucy for me, uh, after being there before, um, you know, you work obviously closely with the head coach who kind of oversees everything. Uh, at the end of the year, these guys are, you know, have meetings and they discuss just, you know, what's happening uh, on the special teams. And if they're not getting, obviously, the results, uh, then changes are, are made. But uh, it all depends on the head coach if, you know, he wants to keep these guys on board, whether he likes working with them. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the bottom line in this, the working relationship. And then, you know, they can do some adjustments. I know uh, the head coach um, intervenes sometimes, but the actual messages and the videos and everything are designated to a power play guy, a penalty killing guy. And, you know, they're discussed uh, amongst them to see what, you know, works best. And if it's not working, then changes are made. And, you know, uh, it wouldn't be the first time that they've, they've removed uh, coaches uh, because of not getting the job done in their so-called role as a special team coach. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's changes come this offseason, because especially new coach comes in. He wants to have people that he's comfortable with and, and people that he knows. Um, and, you know, the, it, the special teams hasn't been working out the way that they want to. Uh, you look at Alex Burroughs when he first was appointed to that job last February. He spoke about how he, he was always in the power play meetings as a player, even though he wasn't necessarily on the power play all the time. And it, it just hasn't been working out now. Um, but we'll see what Martin St. Louis, St. Louis wants to do. I'm sure he has some people in mind from his playing days that things worked really well when it comes to special teams uh, that he might reach out to and say, you know what, I'd rather have this guy on that. But uh, an assistant coach that I think will stay on is Luke Richardson. Uh, he's been that constant behind the bench. He's a, a coach that the players really like. And uh, him and Martin St. Louis go back to their playing days. And he said, you know, he was, he really took me under his wing when, you know, we were players and I'm sure he's been helping him with this transition as well that I, I think he might want to keep him around to, to just help him out still with the coaching. Yeah, you know, some people have been critical of Jeff Gorton because when he first came in as a director of vice president of hockey operations, he said that Dominic Ducharme's job was safe until the end of the season. And obviously it wasn't. But I think he said that partly because I'm sure when he was talking with Jeff Molson before taking the job, Molson probably told him, we can't change the coach. I'm already paying Claude Julien $5 million not to coach. I just gave this other guy, Ducharme, a three-year $5.1 million contract. There's no fans in the you – know, I don't want to I'm, – I'm not interested in paying another coach. We'll just go through this season. It reached the point it was so bad they had to make a change, and, and Molson bit the, the, the bullet financially and went out and got Marty St. Louis. And I wonder if that might factor in moving forward too uh, with the assistant coaches like – Jeff Molson's paying a lot of guys not to coach. Does he want to pay more guys not to coach? Um, I think you're right, though, Jess. I think if there's one guy whose job is safe, it's Luke Richardson. Uh, Marty St. Louis played with him in Tampa and described him as the ultimate teammate. Um, with Luke Richardson, he I imagine he wants to be a head coach somewhere at some point. It's never going to happen in Montreal because of the language issue. So if he sees another organization that might have a better path for him becoming a head coach, Maybe he leaves there, but I think he's the guy that Marty St. Louis would really want to keep. And the, the, the thing with Marty St. Louis, you got to remember, he has no experience, or at least before this job, running an NHL bench. And he spoke about his first game, how it happened so fast and so quick. He needs somebody with him still to help him handle that when it comes to line matchups and everything else that's going on the bench. So Luke Richardson is a guy he knows and he trusts. So I think Marty St. Louis would probably like to keep him there. The other guys, uh, I'd be surprised if, uh, if they're all back next season. Um, can I just throw out like a, a name? I don't know what they're doing right now. I don't know if they're coaching anywhere. I just know they know a thing or two about playing with Martin St. Louis. And I know they're really good at scoring power play goals. Dave Andrachuk. I mean, not just really good. No one has scored more power play goals than Dave Andrachuk. I mean, if we're going to go off people who are connected to each other, uh, whether through Tampa or through other things, why not give Dave Andrachuk a call? I don't know how much Dave Andrachuk knows about how a power play works apart from standing in front of the net and screening the goalie and banging in rebounds. But that is he, very he fair. I mean, Brad Richards is another guy, but at some, you know, 
they've hired a lot of their friends, right? These guys, yeah, at some point, it. I think they got to you know, hire the best people instead of hiring the friends. <laughs> Daniel Cavalier was, uh, you know, Kent Hughes' agency business. If Daniel Cavalier didn't sign with him, probably would have gone under. Um, you know, so there's a lot of friendly hires there. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how much more that continues moving forward. But I might be wrong, Julian. You might be right. Maybe Andrew Trick knows more about the power plays than, than just standing in front of the net. I think he was in broadcasting, maybe part of Tampa's broadcast team at one point. So, but come on, they have to find a way to bring Brad Richards onto this team. They have to bring that trio back together somehow. <laughs> maybe he could be UP for a game. You know, we won't even know. <laughs> but then Brad Richards be UP. When <laughs> Brian Lecavier was being interviewed, he said that he always knew that Marty St. Louis wanted to be a coach when they were teammates. He always spoke about it. And he thought in the back of his mind, hey, maybe one day I'll be an assistant coach with him. And you wonder if you know right now he's not ready to uproot his family they probably weren't you know ready to make more coaching changes this season so maybe in you know Vinny LaCalvia coming in here maybe that's some they're speculating here maybe that's something that has been spoken about moving forward the possibility of Vinny LaCalvia becoming an assistant coach but now you have another guy behind the bench with no experience behind the bench I don't know how well you know I remember when they hired Mario Tremblay mm-hmm. and then they hired Yvonne Cornway to be an assistant and uh you know didn't work out so well yeah as well and, and I hate to bring up that uh, I was on the ice way too many times with Andrew Chuck in front of the net on the power play. <laughs> <laughs> finding, finding ways to flip, deflect it. But, you know, in all seriousness, I think uh, Andrew Chuck is loving uh, life in Florida right now doing his uh, his TV gig. And uh, uh, anyways, stranger things have happened, but... Uh, you, it makes you it makes you wonder. Okay, you know what's what's their priority at this point? As uh, everybody gets older and their priorities change. He was a large man. I wrecked the try and move. <laughs> probably him and uh, and uh, Kerr in Philadelphia were probably two of the best guys for knocking pucks out of the air uh, with big bodies, and you know just just stood there and I I and I asked them a number of times to move and they wouldn't move. Uh, <laughs> and, and the result, say please? the result was it was another minus. Yeah, but cross tracking was legal back then, wasn't it, Rick? We uh, we we were able to do a little bit of that. Yes. <laughs> Tell me more about this cross checking you speak of. I've never seen it. No. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if you have any suggestions on who should take over uh, as part of the Canadians' assistant coaching staff next year, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Uh, give us a like and subscribe to our uh, YouTube page. That would be very nice and kind of you. And visit Hockey Inside Out for full episodes. And, of course, subscribe to the Hockey Inside Out newsletter, MontrealGazette.com slash newsletters.